Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. It never gets old, does it, eh? So there you go. Look at that. Ange once again is the first one in. Hi, all. G'day, Ange. How you going? Two people have joined us already, so it's good to see you. Hello, everybody, on this beautiful Wednesday night. For the first time, the weather is actually nice outside. The sun's just gone down, and we're actually encouraging everybody to say, stuff the outdoors, join us indoors for a bit of hardcore nerdy action. And, in fact, some people are so tragic. We've got eight people watching us already, and I haven't even stopped Googling on yet, so there you go. Anyway, I've got to introduce my co-hosts and lads, uh, MPS and Jeffro. How are we tonight, guys? We're most excellent, as always. <laughs> Bodacious, if you will. <laughs> All right. Now, um, we're going to move on to the first of our conversations, and we've got some interesting stuff coming up a bit later on, too, in regards to changes to our format. Oh, my God, how good is that? So uh, without further ado, this is something that's uh, been playing on MPS's mind for a little while, and we know how MPS likes his presentations. So without mucking around, let's get into it. MPS, over to you. Well, I'm not going to go too crazy with this presentation because it's more of a discussion at this point in time. So it came up to me the other week uh, through, and I'll explain as we go along, is Disney too powerful? And we'll find out shortly. So we can always go, by the power of Disney! <laughs> um, I think it, it's been pretty obvious that Disney bought a lot of stuff over the years, and we'll get to that shortly. Uh, now, is Disney good or is it bad? <laughs> <laughs> so it all started... Oh, hang on, we'll go to this because I just had to put this in uh is the mouse too powerful and we all know disney is called the mouse basically and we discuss that a lot with star wars we reference the mouse a lot so um we'll see how we reference it again tonight and just because it's that powerful it even sucked us in so there you go there's there's some dudes and a dudette um and we were sucked in as well and we had a ball <laughs> how's this yeah, right sweet. just quickly Five adults in Disneyland by themselves that, with no kids. That was just weird. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. So I was watching the Toys That Made Us the other week, the Power Rangers episode, and that was very interesting. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the toys. I did watch the show when I was younger, and I've watched bits and pieces of it over the years, and it's it's a it's a Japanese format made in America and regurgitated and all sorts of stuff, but that's a whole other story and, demonstra uh, and presentation. But what I wanted to see or what I wanted to say was that in 2010, and this is what got me um, serious about this topic here, was um, Haim Saban, the creator of the series, regained ownership of the franchise after seven years under the Walt Disney Company. Now, I didn't know this at the time, that Walt Disney and the Disney Company had bought Power Rangers for a period of time. And what gets really freaky is that in 2001, uh, Haim Saban sells Power Rangers and the sale of Fox Family Worldwide, which he had a stake in, to Disney for $2.9 billion in cash, plus assumption of debt, whatever that means. If you're an accountant, you'll know what that means. I don't. Uh, and, and Saban's take on that was a $1.5 billion. His net worth at the time became $2 billion. This is 2001. And you think to yourself, well, that's interesting. And due to, to factors uh, that most parents didn't like, the fact that Disney had taken over, it was too violent, all that sort of stuff, but nothing had actually changed in the show itself. Disney sells it back. Not just, to, it sells it back to, to Saban. Now, the interesting thing was Disney tried to sell this all over the place, and this is in the documentary, so it's, it's, it's fairly um, knowledge, the knowledge is out there sort of thing, but no one wanted to buy it. And so Saban buys it back for $43 million. How's that? So you imagine this, you go to somewhere and they give you, say, and I'm going to drop the numbers here, $2,900, and you go, that's awesome. And then they go, well, we want to sell this back yet. It's going to cost you $43. And you go, thank you very much. You don't even think about it, right? So, Well, actually, some of that's actually happening these days a little bit because of the COVID crisis and everybody's out of, out of work and there's a lot of money problems or whatever. People are actually selling off their collections uh, to people who are buying them, and those people will then resell them off later on, like years later, and of course the original people will try and buy them back again. So, yeah, it, it's a it's a bizarre situation for sure. Yeah. Well, look, Hasbro bought it 
bought Power Rangers again with several other Saban properties for two uh, for five hundred and twenty-two million dollars only two years ago. So it's gone again. So this guy's sitting here making a gazillion dollars almost, you know. And no, I haven't gone two billion dollars just yet because there's more there's more numbers and it was going to get old very quickly. Um, so that sort of asked the question as to what had Disney bought and sold over the years and. As of 2020, Disney owns all of these. So it owns Fox Network, which includes Alien, Predator, Avatar, Die Hard, Planet of the Apes. It includes Lucasfilm, which includes Indiana Jones and Star Wars. Pixar, which is all the animated films, Disney live action remakes, Disney animation, Marvel Entertainment, which is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, X-Men, Deadpool, Fantastic Four, which is different to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh espn abc in the states the history channel and fx as well as touchstone pictures now touchstone pictures that's a slightly different deal that's only 35 movie uh deal with them and that's a little bit complicated so i'm not going to worry about that too much however this is what they bought basically and for how much so 20th 21st century fox uh 71 billion dollars last year okay just think about that 71 billion dollars okay that's a massive amount of money for an entire an entire network and whatever it's associated with uh lucasfilm for 4.1 billion as we all know back in 2012 pixar for 7.4 billion in 20 uh, 2006 and marvel entertainment before it all sort of kicked off with the movies back in 2009 for four billion dollars and what does this all add up to in 10 years this is what they've spent a total of $86.5 billion for just these four franchises alone. Okay, now that's a staggering number. We're not going to talk about how much they've made or anything like that or anything uh, in that sort of region. We're just talking about what they've bought and what they've owned. And a very quick summary as to what they've owned is this picture. Now, this picture is absolutely insane. Every color there is a section of their franchise, and I'll explain in a second what I mean by that. It is something that you need to actually, you can get on, on the Disney um, wiki page, I think it is, I got this from. So you can actually have a look at it and it's fascinating. Now I've pulled out two sections just quickly. The Walt Disney section, um, sorry, the Lucasfilm section. And if you have a look there, there's there's LucasArts, Lucas Online, Lucasfilm Animation, Lucasfilm Licensing, ILM, and Skywalker Sound. And that's all the, the Lucasfilm stuff that they bought, okay? This will knock your socks off. This is Marvel. This is everything, and I mean everything. They've got um, Marvel Film Productions, Marvel Development, um, Marvel Proprietary Limited. Uh, where is it? Uh, Marvel Characters Inc. Concept Actually, Art. Got everything. In amongst all these graphs, is there an image for the dude who got the job of putting all these images together? <laughs> that's, oh. a, that's a full time job in itself. I tell you what, this thing's phenomenal, right? And it's and it's everything. So they own Marvel basically down to a T. Um, and there's all the other stuff. So you can actually have a look at it later on. It's it's massive. Now the three questions that sort of came up, and we'll get to these, get back to these in a minute, is what should Disney do with all these movie franchises? Well, we know what they're doing with some of them, good, bad, or indifferent. Should they create new content? Because quite frankly, some of their current content isn't doing so great. Uh, is Disney owning all of this a good thing? And that's probably the main question. However, there are other companies that own a lot of media too. I'm going to run through these very, very quickly and we'll come back to these questions. Other companies. So does Disney own Universal Studios, for instance? Well, no, it doesn't. Universal's owned, uh, and in fact, a longtime enemy and competitor of the mouse. Um, and they're, in fact, uh, were in battle rights uh, for Disney over the Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, which is part in part of which has spawned the creation of Mickey Mouse in the first place. So they've had their battles all the way back and Universal was obviously there first. Is DreamWorks owned by Disney? Well, no, both Universal and DreamWorks are owned by the mega um, media conglomerate NBC Universal, which is then in turn owned by Comcast. And they own everything from NBC to the Sci-Fi Channel. And one of the other companies that own everything is Time Warner, which includes HBO, Warner Brothers, the CW, DC Comics, and AOL, uh, and among other properties. Now, this is just massive when you think about it. These giant companies are just sucking in like a black hole everything else. Um, 
got the three questions we'll go back to. Uh, what should Disney do with all these movie franchises? Now, we know that they're re re they've made Star Wars. Uh, they've done movies, uh, finished animation of Clone Wars, and they've done they're doing The Mandalorian. What else are they going to do with it? Uh, Marvel, well, they own Marvel pretty much. So every Marvel film that's come out, the 23 or 22 of them that have come out, they own all the rights to those, plus all the comics, plus anything they create in the future. Um, it's just, it's huge. Should they create new content? And I mean brand new content, not let's take a, a Disney cartoon and turn it into a live action because that's not gone very well for them in recent years. Um, I think personally they should create something new. What that is, I don't know. Um, but we'll see what, what comes out of it. And is Disney owning all of this a good thing? Because it all becomes the same creative, creative sort of areas, you know? So the only thing that I can see in recent times that's doing Disney any good is the Marvel Universe. Those films are going to getting to a point where potentially in the next several years, they might go down the Star Wars way where, oh no, we should have redone this or the, the fans hate this or the fans hate that or whatever the case might be. So they're the three questions, guys. What do you guys think? Jeffrey, you can go first. Well, it, um, one of the interesting things is that you mentioned um, Comcast and um, it was interesting because back in the, uh, the early 90s, uh, the Walt Disney um, organisation was really struggling. So basically they weren't doing very successful in the movies at all. Uh, the only thing that was uh, keeping them sort of uh, in the picture was uh, the theme parks. And at that point in time, Comcast actually put a uh, heavy um, heavy campaign to try and buy Disney. Now, the uh, CEO at the time actually managed to uh, stave that off, but it could, would have been a really interesting whole situation if uh, Comcast had actually been successful. So um, in terms of the, um, the, the new content, I guess uh, we're relying on things like Pixar to sort of create the, uh, the new content. Otherwise, uh, I guess, because they've got to recoup these uh, massive uh, uh, spending that they've actually had, I guess it makes it uh, the safe bet to be able to do something that they know there's a guaranteed market for. So that's why we're going to see uh, Marvel adaptions of comics we already know and love, things like the Star Wars movies, which we already know and love. And um, it's just a, a safe bet. So... Uh, I don't blame them. I mean, it certainly worked for uh, for them, and um, taking the risk on new content. Uh, maybe down the future we might see that. Uh, is uh, owning Disney uh, all this uh, a good thing? Well, I guess if they give us the content and we're happy with what uh, what we like, then um, it must be a good thing. If they screw it up and we see crappy stuff uh, that we're going, this sucks, and you know we we. Uh, we're not enjoying it, then um, I think that would be a different story. Um, I won't answer the three questions in turn. I'll just sort of summarise what I just think of the whole thing. Um, it's interesting because like part of like what MPS has said, when it comes to the concept of Disney, there's two ways of looking at it. There's the whole entertainment thing and the licences and the products they're producing, and then there's the business side. And that's the part that most people don't really get to see. And Disney will make decisions about acquiring licenses or removing licenses and fans just won't and may not understand the logic behind some of it but you can almost guarantee that in the dark depths of the of the disney boardrooms they're sitting there going well okay if we've purchased this product for this much it has to have a return on investment of x and if it doesn't reach that then we'll just ditch it off and we'll just shuffle things around and because D disney is effectively such a behemoth and it's just so big it can it probably has entire departments just devoted to certain things and they'll always keep be keeping a watch on what's working and what's not um i think being an entertainment company i think it's good that these products are with disney a lot of people i know are very anti-disney which i think is sorry i keep it in the mic uh um is a bit unfair but uh, i think that uh at least it's with a company where entertainment uh, is part of their makeup rather than just saying, oh, no, we're in it for the dollars and dollars and nothing else. And that's where it wouldn't be so good. So I think if you take the Disney element right out of it, um, yeah, you can all say that uh, yeah, it's all, all quite good. And it'll be very interesting to see how things um, 
transpire in the future. So, and just quickly, sorry, before I finish, I mean, a good example was the Star Wars franchise. I mean, they didn't put the Disney logo at the start of the Star Wars movies because they knew it might upset a few fans. And that was a good call on Disney's behalf. So they were clearly looking at it from the eyes of saying, well, the fans aren't used to it. They may not like it, so we just won't do it. So it's not like Disney are uh, the big evil empire that some people um, think they are. I'm going to throw a little bit of uh, trivia at you. Uh, in terms of uh, the outreaching effects of the mouse, uh, back in the uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, they actually did a lot of investment in um, startup companies. So, you know, they seed the companies, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And here's one for you. Uh, one of the things that they actually seeded was GoPro, the cameras. So uh, it's not, not just always the media stuff, but it's, there's a lot of other things like that. Another one that they invested in was a web browser called InfoSeek. So uh, they had that for about six or seven years before they sold that off. So it's not just always the, uh, the media thing. And the, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, in terms of big investments, the big one, the first big one for them was 1985, I think it was, and they invested $19 billion in uh, buying uh, ABC, the, uh, the network. So uh, they've um, really done well with that in terms of setting it up, not only as the movie empire that they had, but also establishing a, a television empire, which started off with that. And of course, later on, they invested in uh, ESPN and uh, all the other sort of uh, uh, Fox associated cable uh, shows. All right, before we go any further, there's a few comments I'm just going to post up here. So William had mentioned about the Disney parks are mostly shut down, and I guess, well, that's happening everywhere at the moment, and Susie is right, that uh, clearly this year everybody's taken a financial hit. So, uh, But in time, things will sort of um, come back online again in the next five or six, ten years, whatever, all this, the dust will have blown over and the will continue on. So, uh, so yeah, so everybody's taken a bit of yeah. a hit on that one. I've got um, a... Um, I've sorry, what? I've uh, got an interesting comment. They had the same problem in 2001 with the World Trade Center. The um, uh, the parks were actually closed down and people weren't going and they uh, and they had a huge financial loss. So the parks are that important. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to emphasize that. Yeah, okay. Um, this is probably another sort of discussion for another day. Um, the Star Wars movie mess, well, it depends on, how you, on your perspective. From certain fans, they say that the, the movies are a mess, but from a return on investment, they've probably been quite mm -hmm. successful and they're constantly changing things around. So, um, but that's definitely a discussion for another day. Uh, and where are we? Um, Kelvin, uh, actually, they do show adult content. They just put under the Touchstone Pictures name. They don't put it under the Disney name, name, and that's how they get around that particular problem. So if they want to show and movies for adults. Sorry, what? And they also have uh, Hollywood Pictures, and they were releasing a lot of sort of uh, uh, more mature movies through that. And for a while back in the 2000s, they had uh, Miramax, and they were releasing a lot of stuff uh, through there. Yep, cool. And I'm just reading one other comment. Do you remember Captain Kennedy and Aaron? Yeah, okay, okay. All right. We're staying away from any, like, gender-related concerns and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, okay, MPS, back to you, man. So yeah, it, it, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing. I think creatively maybe it could be a bad thing if they get stale and start doing the same thing again um, uh, and everything becomes the same, you know. So, uh, however, you know, Marvel are doing pretty good because I think they're leaving the people who worked for Marvel in that area. You know, they're doing the same with the Star Wars stuff. Kathleen Kennedy's in there and, and um, Dave Filoni and all that sort of thing. So they're still sort of in there, but what the content is is completely different. And you're right, they're not just doing the movie franchises. That, that um, mouse picture I showed you has a whole heap of other things. You know, if you go to their Wikipedia page, the list of assets owned by the Walt Disney Company is massive. They own a stack of stuff. Um, but any good large company will do that. You know, I've worked for several companies that are very large that have different sections. And, you know, if they lose on one side, they sort of, they and they make more on another side, they sort of even that whole thing out. And I think that's what they'll do eventually with this in terms of, of money. Now, because we're not really talking about the money at this point in time, um, it's just all these questions about the content and what they own and, and all that sort of stuff. They're going to, would they get to a point, do you reckon, where they're just going to go, we just have too much, we can't cope, you know, we have no. 10 film 
film companies, we have 30 shows and, and what if what if one of those pieces sort of crack in the um, uh, in in that machine, you know, if the cog breaks or something, what would they do? Well, um, you can look at it from the point of view of, of many large businesses where they're sort of broken up into different areas and different departments look after different things. And if one is failing, it'll usually be the slack would be picked up by somebody else before they make a decision as to saying, well, what's the long term viability of this particular product? So uh, it's not like there'll be like a massive panic going on and say, oh, suddenly this this range of movies or TV shows is sort of dying in the ass when all the others are really picking up and doing very, very well. So it'll always be shuffling of the deck chairs no matter what. Um, and that's just the nature of how um, corporations and business works. It's a little bit cold and it's a little bit nasty, but that's the, how these things work. Without this business side, and people have to remember this, none of these franchises would exist. And certainly they wouldn't exist as the way we like know them now. So to a large degree, you kind of got to let the corporate stuff, uh, the corporate world do what it, it needs to do. Actually, they've been um, very clever in the way they do the investments because there's pretty much nothing if they're doing a movie that they can't sort of do themselves. I mean, they've now got things like um, Skywalker Sound, so the sound's covered there. They've got Bona Vista Distribution, so the movie's distributed through there. They have um, their own studios. Uh, they are also possibly in the uh, the near future looking at buying a uh, cinema chain because, as we know, the cinemas are, uh, are really struggling because they can't show movies. And there's a lot of talk that they'll be buying out one of the major um, uh, cinema chains. So virtually they've got everything from go to woe to be able to sort of uh, distribute. Uh, if they need to put the soundtrack out, they've got Hollywood Records. So uh, one of their um, uh, productions feeds off another production and it feeds off another production. So things like ILM, you know, they've got an inbuilt um, place to do the special effects. So they don't really have to sort of go anywhere other themselves to basically be, you know, uh, self-sufficient. Same. Sorry, I just realised I'm going to start again. So, <laughs> sorry, Pierce, I, uh, I should have gone to the three screens earlier. Um, I've got them an idiot. Uh, but I just completely forgot. And I put myself on mute when I'm typing messages so you don't hear the keyboard clacking, otherwise it'll just drive everybody nuts. Um, but, yeah, I think a lot of people just sort of see the the big power coming in and then there's all these like threats from every angle and i think people need to just sort of chill out a bit and let these things happen and you're right they're not going to get these things correct all the time they will you know launch a, f a film franchise and it will suck but they'll launch another one and it'll be magnificent so you know it's checks and balances not every company gets it right all the time and there are plenty of examples of big businesses that make a decision and it ends up tanking and they just like get over it and move on so well uh, there you go well, I find them interesting in the sense that they don't label themselves in any of the Star Wars films, as we mentioned, any of the Marvel films. You wouldn't even know that they were owned by Disney. You know, I didn't until I, I did this research and went, oh, hang on a second, that's right. They, they did buy them years ago, but I'd forgotten about it because you don't see any of that sort of stuff happening. Uh, I think it's AMC in the States they might be buying those theaters. I think it's called AMC. Um, and and uh, they also have Hulu. And they've obviously got Disney Plus, so they're they're certainly covering every base. It's not like they like any sort of every sort of film company that goes, well, we can make a film, but we can't do anything with it. You know, these guys, like you said, Jeffro, can start from concept, go to finished mm. production, go to post production, and then distribute it however they want for whatever price. You know, they could sell it for free almost, and they'll they'll get it. So um, yeah, look, it's a it's an interesting sort of thought and it's not something that sort of comes up in terms of entertainment as much as say a corporate takeover does you know when you know governments take over this or companies take over that or whatever the case is another way of looking at it too is saying if disney never existed or if they didn't buy these rights where would they be would they be with a shitload of other companies would they just not be anywhere at all i mean you think of all the products that wouldn't exist like probably all your marvel movies probably wouldn't happen because the companies that you know, Disney had the, the ability to finance all this stuff and make it all happen. So they're actually, if you want to look at it and say, oh, they're, they're the, was it the best of two evils, which I think is a pretty cruel way of saying it, they're definitely it's more beneficial having them than not having them. So, yeah. Well, they've certainly done that with Star Wars. If we didn't have them buy out Star Wars um, and Lucasfilm, we might not have had the three films, good, bad, or indifferent as they are. Uh, we probably wouldn't have had The Mandalorian um and the clone wars would never have been finished as for the marvel films i think what would have happened is they would have still made them through marvel entertainment and marvel media 
but I think they would have been terrible. I don't think you would have had the stars come up. I don't think you would have had the, the technology as such or developed as much potentially. And I don't think it um, would have gone anywhere near. And I don't think 22 films later, they'd be still going. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's definitely a, a way of looking at it saying some fans can sort of see a big picture. Other fans just go in for the passion and just go, oh, we hate this. We hate Kathleen Kennedy. We hate this. And it's just like some people need to just chill out and go, you know what? You need to sort of uh, analyze it from right, holistically. You look at everything. You look at the pros, look at the cons before you start just drawing conclusions when Disney goes out and buys another franchise and just say, well, what are the positives that can come out of this? I mean, using Star Wars as a great example, right? If Star Wars was never sold to Disney, nothing would be ha would have happened. It was just like there would have been no um, sequel trilogy movies, no Mandalorian, no Rogue One, no Salt. It just wouldn't have happened at all, full stop, right? No episodes 7, 8, and 9. So, you know, like it or not, it, the fact is that these things do exist and they're going to continue to exist. And, uh, and people sort of need to just realise that. And uh, and those who are just overly critical of the entire organisation kind of need to pull their heads in sometimes. So but there you go. All you need now is for Disney to buy Star Trek and then we'll be cooking on gas. And that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> <laughs> So better watch out. Yeah, they well, might change the Kelvin timeline. Yeah, I, that's why I brought that up, right? <laughs> that is, I'm just going to dangle that carrot. You know, it's just going to dangle right in front of the camera there. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So, uh, line and sinker. Yeah, exactly right. Anyway, dude, all good. That's it. I'm done. That was just a short discussion. Very good. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely like that. Uh, Thomas, uh, yeah, uh, Rogue One was uh, way overrated. I guess it depends on your perspective. Uh, at the mm -hmm. time, it was actually very, very popular with a lot of the fan base, uh, possibly because it came out after Force Awakens, which a lot of people weren't exactly au fait with, but each of, their, uh, each of their own. So, oh, my goodness, Mrs. Echo, here we go. Oh, here we go. Disney buying Doctor Who. Oh, how good would that be? Hey? So when you got the woo woo, you have got the TARDIS thing and the and the swirly shit. You got the little mouse head coming through Mickey Mouse. That'd be kind of groovy, eh? So uh, very good. Um, yes, good stuff. Hang on, do, we, do they leave Group Marvel to manage? Uh, yeah. So to answer your question, ads uh, Disney would own the property, but they would be handed off to the individual areas to actually make the product. So Marvel would have would look, make their own movies just like Lucasfilm make the movies. Disney own the, own the entire thing and make reap all the financial rewards, but they don't physically make the products. They then pass them off on to the people who do, which is kind of groovy. All right. Uh, look to who I like. Oh, my goodness. The best of Star Wars. The love of Rogue One. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, I'm opening a can of worms here. Look at this. Oh, was The Star Wars fans are just dug out. Look at this. Oh, it was right away. All right. So we're going to move on. Otherwise, we'll just be watching all these comments about Rogue One and Solo and all this other stuff for the next uh, couple of months. Now, I reckon that would be kind of, kind of cool. So there you go. All right. We are going to uh, buzz off. We had a bit of fun with this one tonight. And it's all been very good and very exciting. Uh, so, yes, join us next week for the Big Star Wars show with Aaron. It's worth watching uh, uh, primarily for him, not for necessarily in person myself. We're just a bunch of dudes. But uh, we'll get a real expert on board who knows his Star Wars stuff, which is very, very cool. Uh, and we'll also be promoting the – because I don't think it's – we we're actually not on until the – yes, we will be back for one more episode before the end of the month. Yeah. So we'll promote our uh, Halloween thing once again. Very good. Um, all right. So, oh, yes, Dust to Dawn. Yeah, I remember that one. That was uh, actually mm. Quentin Cantina was in that movie, too, mm. which is kind of good. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to buzz off. We're going to leave you to it. And as always, make sure you stay nerdy. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 uh,